Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to be learning how to crochet the Mountain Ridge Beanie, which you can see here in the photo in front of you. There's also uh, many more photos on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com, the link for which for this written pattern can be found in the description of this video. So this is the Mountain Ridge Beanie. This is a very highly textured beanie and I have rated it, uh, graded it as an enter immediate level uh, crochet beanie simply because of all of the different stitches and textures uh, found within it. Hopefully this video tutorial uh, will provide you some help uh, if you are struggling with working with the written pattern. So this is the beanie here. Uh, this is sized to fit an adult or teen woman's head. Uh, later on in the video, I'll give you the stitch multiples in case you would like to change the size of it uh, for someone else. Now this beanie, I have made it using the Lion Brand Woolies yarn. Uh, you will need approximately one ball, so it's about 200 yards of a worsted weight yarn. The hat done in the photo here and the one I'm showing you is done in the color Still Water. Later on in the video, you're going to see me using this gray heather color for the first part. Uh, along with the uh, yarn, one ball of yarn, you're going to need a five millimeter crochet hook. Links to both of these items along with the written free pattern uh, link on my blog can be found in the description of this video. So thank you so much for joining me. This hat is number three in the Wonderful Hats Crochet Along. If you are following along with that, if you haven't heard of it yet, again, check out the description of the video for the link uh, to all the information about it. Um, while you're here, don't forget to subscribe. Take a look around. There are many other crochet beanie and hat patterns there, including the other hats in this Crochet Along. Now this hat is worked from the brim up. And uh, our brim is worked in rows, so you're going to start by making a slip knot. And then by making a foundation chain, and your foundation chain is going to be a total of 10 stitches. Once you have worked your 10 stitches, you'll begin row 1 by working a slip knot into the second chain from your hook. Now, if you are not a fan, or sorry, a slip stitch, a slip stitch into the second cha chain of your hook. If you are not a fan of working slip stitches, then you may substitute these slip stitches for either a single crochet or a half double crochet. You're then going to slip stitch in each stitch all the way across your foundation chain. You will have a total of nine slip stitches. Once you come to the end of your foundation chain, chain one and turn your work. We're now going to continue working in the back loop only to find your back loop. You're going to look at the top of your stitch and uh, you have this nice little V here. Your back loop only is that horizontal bar that is furthest away from you. So you're going to insert your hook under that loop only and slip stitch in each stitch all the way across again. You are welcome to substitute it for a single crochet or a half double crochet. Once you come all the way across, chain one and turn your work. You're now going to continue repeating row two so slip stitch in each stitch all the way across, working in the back loop only. And you're going to continue that until your work from the beginning measures approximately 15 uh, or 16 to 17 inches. Uh, and again, you can adjust the size. I'll give you the stitch count multiples uh, for the next round. So continue working till your hat measures 16, 17 inches and that's not stretched. It's just kind of laying flat and relaxed and then meet me back here. And we'll move on to the body of the hat. 
Once you have worked your brim to 16 or 17 inches and that's just laid flat, it should have quite a little bit of stretch to it. You're then going to want to seam the two shorter ends together. So take your hat brim and just fold it over like so. We're going to work a slip stitch seam and we're going to work it inserting our hook through the back loop only of the first piece and then across to the corresponding stitch on the other piece. Again, back loop only. You're working through both thicknesses and you're just going to slip stitch across. Be sure that you don't skip any stitches and that you line up your stitches so that your uh, brim closes evenly and just slip stitch all the way across. Once you come to the end, chain one, flip your brim so that it is right side out. There's your seam. And you're ready to start working the body of the hat. We're now going to continue working along or around uh, this longer edge. And uh, we're going to begin by working sort of a foundation round of single crochet stitches. Uh, we're going to, there's no pretty places to put your hook, so you're just going to be inser inserting your hook down into the brim of the hat a little bit wherever it feels comfortable. You're going to want to, after you've chained one, single crochet 72 single crochet stitches evenly all the way around. If it helps, uh, I recommend placing a stitch marker about halfway around and then you can place half your stitches on one side, half of your stitches on the other. If you are adjusting the size of your beanie to make it smaller or larger, for this round of single crochet stitches, you're going to need a multiple of four stitches. So go ahead, work your single crochets, and then meet me back here. At the end of your round one, you're going to join with the slip stitch into that first stitch. Chain three, which is going to count as a double crochet stitch, and do not turn your work. For round two, you're going to double crochet into the next stitch. So skip that same stitch as joining. Double crochet into the next stitch and then into each stitch all the way around. When you come back to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of that starting chain three. At the end of round two, join with a slip stitch into the top of your turning chain or your starting chain. Do not turn your work. For round three, we're going to start the first of our textured rounds. We'll begin by chaining one and now work a front post double crochet in the same stitch as joining. So that's in the top of our chain three. To work your front post double crochet, yarn over, bring your hook in front of your work, insert your hook around the post of the stitch just below there, so around our chain three, uh, inserting your hook from the front, across to the back, out through the front again, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. That's your first front post double crochet. You're going to work another front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. So yarn over, bring your hook in front of your work, insert your hook from the front around the back, out through the front again, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. That's your second front post double crochet. Your next, you're going to work to uh, one back post 
double crochet around each of the next two stitches. To work your back post double crochet, yarn over, bring your hook in back of your work and insert from the back across the front around the post and out through the back again, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. I'm going to do that one more time around the next stitch. Yarn over, bring your hook in back of your work, insert your hook from the back through the front, across around the post, out through the back again, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two loops. That's your second back post double crochet. We're now going to repeat this all the way around. So work one front post double crochet around the post of each of the next two stitches, followed by one back post double crochet around each of the posts of the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around when you come to your first stitch join with a slip stitch in the top of that first front post double crochet. At the end of round three, I finished off with two back post double crochet stitches, uh, one in each of the last two stitches. You'll join with a slip stitch in the top of that first stitch. Chain one and do not turn your work. For round four, begin by working one back post double crochet around the same stitches joining. So around that first stitch, when I'm working this back post and eventually the front post double crochet, I'm inserting my hook and working around that chain stitch and the front post down below. So insert your hook around the post and the chain stitch of that first stitch and finish your back post double crochet. You're then going to work one front post double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Back post double crochet around each of the next two stitches. And you're now ready to work the repeat. You're going to work one front post double crochet around each of the next two stitches and one back post double crochet around each of the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around to the final stitch and you're going to work, uh, your final stitch will be a back post double crochet, and then you can join with a slip stitch in the top of your first stitch. At the end of round four, you've back post double crocheted in your final stitch join with the slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. For round five, you're going to chain one, back post, double crochet around the first stitch, and the next stitch. Next, work one front post double crochet around each of the next two stitches. and then one back post double crochet around each of the next two stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around, one front post double crochet around each of the next two stitches, followed by one back post double crochet around each of the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around to the final two stitches and you'll work 
my front post double crochet in each of those final two stitches and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. For round six, you begin by chaining one and work one front post double crochet in the same stitch as joining. Next, work one back post double crochet around each of the next two stitches, followed by one front post double crochet around each of the next two stitches. You're now going to repeat that one back post double crochet around each of the next two stitches followed by one front post double crochet around each of the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around. You're going to work one front post double crochet in your final stitch and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round six, you're going to join with a slip stitch in the top of your first stitch and chain one. Now for the next eight rounds, so for round seven through to 14, you're going to repeat rounds three through to six twice more. So that round three started with your chain one and then the front post double crochets in the first stitch and then the next stitch followed by your two back post double crochets so that was your round three. So you're going to repeat rounds three, four, five, and six two more times. Once you've done that, you can meet me back here and we will start the decrease in the top of our hat. Once you reach the end of round 14, uh, I've switched over to another hat here just to show you the decreases uh, in a different color. Uh, but once you switch, uh, once you complete round 14, your hat should look something like this. You can see these nice diagonal textured lines coming up here. We're going to now start the decrease rounds and I'll warn you, this is where it starts to get a little bit complicated simply because I wanted to continue this diagonal pattern up into the de decreases of the hat. So what we're going to, going to do for round 15, you've chained one we're going to front post double crochet into each of the first two stitches so the same stitch is joining and into the next stitch next back post double crochet around each of the next two stitches Front post, double crochet around each of the next two stitches. So we've now worked six stitches in our typical pattern. And you're then going to work a back post two together over the next two stitches. So to work our back post, it's a back post double crochet two together. So to work the back post double crochet two together, yarn over, bring your hook and back, insert your hook around the post from back to front out back again around the next stitch yarn over draw up a loop yarn over and pull through two loops you have two loops left on your hook yarn over bring your hook again and back of your work insert your hook around the post of the next stitch going from back around the front out the back again yarn over draw up a loop yarn over and pull through two loops you have three loops left on your hook yarn over and pull through all three that's your back post double crochet two together we're now going to repeat uh, what we just did all the way around so you're going to start by working one front post double crochet around each of the next two stitches 
one back post, double crochet around each of the next two stitches. One front post, double crochet around each of the next two stitches. And then a back post, double crochet, two stitches together over the next two stitches. You're going to continue to repeat that all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch in the top of that first stitch. At the end of round 15, chain one. For round 16, you're going to back post double crochet in that first stitch. So the same stitch is joining. And then work a front post double crochet over each of the next two stitches. back post, double crochet, I'm just going to free my yarn there, back post, double crochet around each of the next two stitches. And then work a front post, double crochet, two together over the next two stitches. So to work our front post double crochet, two together, yarn over, bring your hook in front of your work, insert your hook from the front, around back, out through the front again, yarn over and draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. You're going to repeat that, yarn over, bring your hook in front. This time you're working over the previous two together. So you're going to insert your hook from front, around back, out through the front around that entire stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the three hooks, uh, loops on your hook. That's your front post, uh, double crochet two together. You're then going to repeat one back post double crochet around the next stitch, one front post double crochet around each of the next two stitches, one back post double crochet around each of the next two stitches. Once you've worked those five individual stitches, you'll work a front post double crochet two together over the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around and then join with a slip stitch in your first stitch. For round 17, chain one, work a back post double crochet around each of the first two stitches. Followed by a front post double crochet in each of the next two st stitches. Next, you're going to work a back post double crochet two together around each of the next two stitches. So when you're working this one, make sure you're working around the entire post of that next, uh, that previous front post double crochet, just like so. And then you're going to repeat, uh, working one back post double crochet around each of the next two stitches. followed by a front post double crochet around each of the next two stitches. Then a back post double crochet two together over the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around when you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into your first stitch.
for round 18, chain one. Work a front post double crochet in the first stitch and then back post double crochet around each of the next two stitches. Next, you're going to front post double crochet two stitches together over the next two stitches. We're now going to repeat a front post double crochet around the next stitch, followed by a back post double crochet around each of the next two stitches. and front post double crochet two stitches together. Repeat that beginning with your front post double crochet all the way around and uh, then join with a slip stitch in your first stitch. At the end of round 18 join with a slip stitch in the first stitch and chain one. For round 19, we're going to front post double crochet around each of the next two stitches. And then front post double crochet two stitches together. Repeat that front post double crochet. So there's no back post double crochets in this round. Front post double crochet around each of the next two stitches. And then front post double crochet two stitches together over the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around and join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. For round 20, chain one, front post double crochet around the first stitch and then front post double crochet two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around front post double crochet around the next stitch and front post double crochet two stitches together. When you come all the way around, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. For round 21, it is your final round. Chain one, front post, double crochet two together over those next two stitches. And you're going to repeat that all the way around. Front post, double crochet, two together all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch and then fasten off with a long tail. And I'm just going to keep working around here the top of my hat and uh, I'll show you what I mean when I reach that point. So just go ahead, front post double crochet, two stitches together all the way around. final stitch. Join with a slip stitch into the top of that stitch. Fasten off. And we're now going to use this long tail in order to sew the top of our hat closed. So take your yarn needle Thread your yarn through it, and I like to turn my hat inside out before I begin. A 
And to close the top of your hat, you're simply going to weave your hook in and out through the top tops of the stitches in that last round. Just as I'm doing here, continue all the way around until you come back to the beginning. Like so. Once you've done that, you can simply pull it tight to close it. I like to tie a little bit of a knot to make sure that it is secure. And then you're going to weave in your end and trim it off. You can turn your hat right side out. And then as I mentioned before, uh, this hat and all of the hats in the Wonderful Hat Crochet Along work well both with a pom-pom or without. If you decide to attach a yarn pom-pom to the top, I recommend leaving two long tails and then attaching it, uh, like tying it with a bow so that you can detach the pom-pom uh, when it comes time to wash your hat. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Once again, don't forget to subscribe. Check out all the hats and uh, other crochet patterns here on my channel. And I'll see you all again soon. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye. Bye.